we want to talk in some depth about this language called Postscript and how important it is. But it's in the very nature of Postscript that it uses a notation called postfix and that in turn relies for its execution environment on this notion of a stack. Now we haven't covered stacks so far in computer file so before getting into Postscript full-blown as it were I've got to tell you something about stacks and we may be in a position to put this out as a separate film in its own right, doing a bit about stacks first of all, mentioning Postscript from time to time, but it's important that you realise that stacks are of much wider application in computer science than just to Postscript. A plus B, what could be more commonplace than that in any language that you've programmed in? And that plus in the middle is an operator. It takes, in this case, a couple of operands, it combines them together, it does the addition. So these, of course, things like plus, minus, multiply, divide, raise the power of, are examples of arithmetic operators, but they need the operands to work on. Notice that the operator, the addition, comes in between the operands, the A and the B. And because it's inserted and inscribed inside the two operands, that's why this is called an infix use. Well, we're all very familiar with infix. It's what we're taught at high school and what we use most of the time. It's perfectly possible to write like that using a prefix plus. You could say plus AB. That's prefix notation. Basically, if you read it out, you're saying add together A and B. Yeah? You're putting the plus at the start, so it precedes the operands, so it's prefix. And just to make it clear that this is something you are familiar with, sometimes if you have a language that defines addition, not so much with an operator, but with a function call, you can say add. Add a, comma, b, and the arguments, or the operands, are in parentheses. What happens if you write it? so that it comes after the operands. Ah, we're here at last. This is postfix. A gentleman who was a mathematical logician from Poland called, try and get the spelling right, I think his name is pronounced something like Jan Łukasiewicz, because that L becomes a faint soft W sound with the crossbar. He was a mathematical logician, and what he said was, do you know, if I write stuff out like this as either prefix or postfix, it's so much easier for me to prove mathematical theorems with. I'll tell you why in a minute. Net result of all this was that uh, people being unable to pronounce his name correctly and getting all the stresses and accents wrong, decided that rather than pronouncing what they found hard, they would call this Polish notation. Now, actually, Polish notation applies to using anything that isn't infix. I've seen prefix notation being called forward Polish notation. I've seen this, AB+, plus, given its traditional name of reverse Polish notation. But that's where it came from, the uh, gentleman who invented it. Sometimes this is even abbreviated to a thing you may also have seen, RPN, Reverse Polish Notation. It saves the interpreter or the compiler an awful lot of effort in actually executing the expressions that you write, write down. Let's keep very simple again to A plus B. If I write A plus B like that, and let's say we'll see what the C language compiler would do to it. What would it have to do to it? How would it translate it into binary? I don't want to do strings of meaningless binary with you, but I'll tell you what I will do. I'll try and translate that as if I was the C compiler into assembly code. Now the assembly code will depend on whether you're on an ARM chip, an Intel chip or whatever. And some of you will know the GCC compiler gives a flag on there as an, as an option, which says, show me the assembler code that you would produce for this. And here goes, I'm making this up, it might not correspond to any particular assembly you know, but I hope you'll get the idea. Load register R1 with A, 
The compiler will store off the values of A and B in memory, but as you all know, before they can be added together, they've got to be lifted into the central processor unit of the computer. And then when they're added, you call up the arithmetic unit inside the CPU. Load register command, register 2 this time, with B. Add what is in register 1 to what is in register 2 and put the answer in register 3. Roughly similar to the last assembler language I taught, which was for the ARM chip. Don't castigate me if I got some of the details wrong, but I hope that's just to give you the idea. Just look at what it has to do. It has to get A, get B, and do the addition. You have to do it that way, because you can't do anything with something until you get them first and lift it into the CPU and put it in registers. Just look at this, what it does. It gets A into a register, it gets B into another register, it adds them together, puts the answer somewhere in the third register, a, B, add. A, B plus. It's postfix notation. For even more complicated things, it has to convert it into reverse Polish, explicitly or implicitly, in order to decide what code to generate. And what Lukashevich really loved about this, absolutely thought it was ace when he discovered it, is the following. Suppose we now write A plus B star C. Which one of these addition or multiplication operators takes precedence? Answer is the multiply. The multiply must be done first. Everybody knows that. And if you don't want it to be done first, you have to deliberately force it to be done the other way. So let's be clear, this one says multiply the B by C because multiply is more powerful than add. And when you've got the answer there, add it to A. This one says I want you to add A and B and then multiply by C. What Lukashevich said, this is fantastic. He said, in my proofs I hate parentheses, they mess things up. But you realise that you don't have to parenthesize because in reverse Polish, this comes out to be A, B, C, star plus, whereas this one comes out to be A, B, plus, C, star. I'm telling you that A plus B times C ought to translate to that in postfix, reverse Polish, whatever you want to call it. The reason it does, you've got to be careful here, let me remind you of what you will all have been ta taught at high school, is that multiply is a stronger operator than add. Multiplication takes precedence, as the phrase goes. So in here, to get the right answer, you multiply B times C, first of all, and then you do the add because it's of lower precedence. So if all these are fives, A, B and C, they all represent the number five, you get five times five is 25, 25 plus five is 30. The way that this is represented in reverse Polish is as follows, A, B, C, multiply, plus. And the way that this works is that when you get an operator, it is going to apply to the two immediately preceding operands, because that's what postfix is all about. The more you look at that, the more you realise, and computer scientists, when they looked at reverse Polish notation in the late 40s and early 50s, just thought all their Christmases had come at once. Not only was this what we needed for compiling stuff and getting usage, usage of registers and CPUs absolutely right, but also it related very much to a data structure that they were in the process of realizing its power, the stack. Now there's a lot of computer science depends on stacks. I sometimes think that stacks and trees is just about all computer science is about, but it's the first time we've mentioned them, I think, on computer file. So I'll try and go very, very gently with you about this. This is a stack. Why is it a stack? It's a stack because you can so-called push things on it. I'm going to push something else onto the top of the stack. Notice that I can only access things by taking them off this rod. So therefore, it's a last thing in, first thing out storage mechanism. I'm going to push the white. I've got a stack with three objects on it. The only easy one to get at is the top of the stack. And if I take it off like that, that's called 
popping the stack. So you push it on to the top and you pop the top of the stack like that. Let's be clear in all of this work that I shall be doing now with discs and stacks. I'm using these discs here to be of different sizes, simply so you can see which is which on the stack I'm producing. There's no implication that the biggest disc represents the biggest integer or anything like that. I'll try and be clear as, to, as I go along as to which one represents A, which one represents B, which one represents C, or maybe which one represents some partial intermediate result where you've multiplied two things together or whatever. So don't get mesmerised too much by the size of these things. This is a case where size doesn't matter. You've just got to remember which is which. Well, if we're pushing and popping then, how does that relate to this reverse Polish, this postfix for that expression? Let's call this big one here the A. I'm going to push A. So the rule then for interpreting reverse Polish notation is if it's an operand, push it on the stack. B, is that an operand? Yes, push it on the stack. C, another operand, push it on the stack. Next one, multiply. Ah, well the rule about interpreting reverse Polish on a stack is to say if you hit an operator, Think to yourself, how many operands has this got? Then take them off the stack, those two operands in this case, do the operation and push the answer back. So I take off C and I take off a B, multiply them together. So I've got a B times C intermediate result now, which I represent with this smaller one here. Remember this one is the B times C sub result. And having done that multiply, the rule is you push the intermediate answer back on the stack. Coming to the end of the reverse Polish string here, you'll see there's a final plus. What does plus mean? Plus means it expects two operands, and we're fortunate we've got it right. There's two things on the stack. There's our original A, and there's the intermediate result that we've pushed back on of doing B times C. So for the plus, you take them both off, you do an add, like that, you produce the final answer, which is this very small disk here. And in Postscript and in most other systems, when you've got the final answer, you leave it at the top of the stack like that. So the answer for A plus B times C has been evaluated using a stack and reverse Polish and the final answer has appeared on top of the stack. So for interpreted languages with expressions of this sort, reverse Polish, postfix is its other name, don't forget, and stacks, they just go together perfectly. They were built in heaven for one another without a question. We've got a third, a third, a third. We've coped with that, we've coped with that. If you get a choice of either that pair or that pair of thirds, it doesn't matter which actually. Okay, so now we've got one sorted list. One third 